As we discussed in our previous model, you know, one of the benefits of working with a building information modeling workflow is the ability to pretty much measure twice and cut once. We'll talk a little bit about this. That's basically allow me to measure and set up the scenario and create the final product, which in our case is a building, before any ground gets broken. This gives us the opportunity to solve any problems or issues we may not have seen working with T 2D tools. It also gives us the potential to collaborate early in the design process and it allows us to hopefully save money and issues and RFIs later on down the line. So in this module, we're going to talk about working with real world information and real world coordinates, specifically working with the survey point and the project base point. So before we get started, I want to make sure that we get started off on the right foot and I want to talk a little bit about setting up our Revit project the correct way. So that includes one, how to handle working with references and CAD in files that we might be importing into our project. Those can be things like surveys, any kind of maps, um, or any kind of a civil data as well. Also, I want to show you how we can set up the true north and the project north and talk about the difference between the two within our project. Last but definitely not least, I want to show you how we can work with the survey and the project base point when working within Revit, how we can set those up, and just how to wrap our brains around what those two concepts are. And after we get to that, we're ready to start modeling and I'll show you how we can make some simple forms and masses and then we can run a quick energy analysis on that. So let's go ahead and jump into Revit really quick and let's start off on a new project. So if you recall from last module, we talked a little bit about this screen here and we actually accessed this wall file and it was a previous file. So let's go ahead and start fresh. So right underneath projects here, let's click on the architectural template and let's start a new project together. So while Revit's doing this, let's talk a little bit about what we're getting ready to see. So you might be familiar with this, of course, hopefully. This is our user interface we talked about last module. So for this module, we're mainly going to be working in our project browser here. And we'll also be working with a few tools down here in our view controls bar. So within our project browser, we're going to be navigating through our levels quite a bit. Level 1, our site plan. And we're also going to be working in our elevation view. And we'll get into why and the nuts and bolts of all that as we're working and you'll get comfortable with it. And again, we're going to also going to show you how to take advantage of our view control bar and hide any kind of hidden or ghost elements that could slow down the performance of our project or kind of get in the way of things. So with that started, let's go ahead and bring in an external file into our project. So I'm going to go ahead and jump to level one in our project browser and let's get that started. So we'll go in the project browser here, bottom left, double click on level one. So now, if you recall, our ribbons at the top of the screen are all organized according to like a tabbing system. So right now we're in architecture tab. So in order to bring an external file into our project, let's go on ahead and click on insert tab. And in the import panel, let's go on ahead and import CAD. Now the reason I don't want to link my CAD file is I'm going to be making some changes to this CAD file. It's highly likely that I may be deleting some layers that I don't need or I may add something here and there just to kind of give me additional reference when I'm building out my project. And if you recall from our conversation about linked versus imports, a linked file in a linked situation, anything I do to one file will update the other. So in my case, since I know that I'm going to be making some changes, deleting layers, import CAD works the best for me. So let's go on ahead and click on import CAD. And in your project files, you should be able to locate a file titled 3D Community Surface and lot plan. So let's go ahead and click on that and let's bring that into our project. Now before you click open, let's go ahead and make sure we have our pos positioning set to origin to origin. We're going to make sure we place it at level one. And if your current view only is selected, go on ahead and deselect that. I'm going to go ahead and make sure it's not selected because if we selected that, we could really only be able to see it in that current view. And we may want to reference this throughout several views depending on what we're doing with our project. And again, after all, this is going to be a reference file. So once we get what we need from it, we can throw it away and delete it. But I still want to be able to see it in all my views and in a 3D view. So keep that deselected. All right, so we're ready to bring this into our project. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Open. And this is pretty complex here. This is from a civil uh, application here. So we're going to have a lot of things we need to kind of just say OK to here. So we're going to have, I know that some elements are going to be lost during my import. That's OK. I have a few 
elements that I mainly want to keep. And that's going to be knowing what my north arrow is, kind of the layout of my lots and everything, and also get an idea of where a survey was taken. So I'm going to go ahead and say close. I know that some of my information is going to be lost. And then I get a warning down here. It lets me know that things are kind of far away and super, super far away on my display, and they really won't be able to see them. So what we can do at this point is I'm going to close out of this warning, and I'm going to right-click on my draw area. And what it'll do, it'll bring up this little window, my contextual window, and I can go over here to Zoom to Fit. Now let's left-click on Zoom to Fit, and when we do that, you'll notice something. Just to this area, you must see a little file here. I'm going to go ahead and select that file, and I'm going to hold down my wheel, and I'm going to slide my mouse to the left, and I'm going to bring it to the center of my screen. Now I'm going to scroll in with my mouse so I can zoom in. And that looks like the file we need. So it's kind of crazy right now. I hover over it and I get this super thick blue line. So I'm going to go ahead and select this, scroll in, and let's unpin this really quick so that I can move it around and do it all, do what I need to do with it. And that also helps get rid of that thick blue bar that may have been in the way. So now that thick blur bar is more of a thin bar. So there's a couple of things we need to do. We know that we can bring this into our project. But what we need to do next is we need to scale this before we do any anything else. So I can do that really quick by taking a quick measurement. So making sure I'm on level one, I can select my element. And in my ribbon here, underneath the measure, pan, measure panel, I can take a quick measurement by clicking on my ruler here. And I know that with my lots here, and this looks like this will be our site here, we're going to be occupying three lots, that the distance from this point to this point should be about 75 feet. So I'm gonna take a quick measurement just to make sure. So luckily we get to snap into pointer. So I'm gonna snap and I'm gonna run straight across here and I'm gonna scroll in with my mouse to try to find my square that lets me know I'm snapping at my end point. So it looks like we're at about 150 feet. So it looks like I could probably scale this down just a bit or actually 125 feet. You could tell there from that distance. So I need to scale this back. So I'm going to hit escape to clear out of that. I'm going to go ahead and select my drawing again. And in the modify panel this time, let's scale this bad boy. So I'm going to go look for my scale icon here and I'm going to click on it. So if you remember our conversation before we do anything else here, I mentioned to you the status bar. Whenever we initiate a tool, the status bar is going to let us know what steps we need to take to get something done. So we initiated our scale tool. So if you look down here at our status bar, it says click to enter my origin. So I'm going to go where I know exactly what my measurement needs to be. So in this case, this is going to be my origin. So now, if I move now, it's telling me click to enter my drag point. So my drag point is going to be the end point. So I need to make go ahead and make that second click will be my drag point right there. And now, if since I'm going to scroll back, not clicking anything, but I am going to scroll back with my wheel. So there we have, we see our measurement, right? So now what I need to do, if I want to scale this up or scale this down, it's all going to be depending on which direction I'm moving my mouse. So we want to scale this down, we need to move this way. And you can see our dimension getting smaller. Now we can try our hardest to use our mouse to get this done. I'm going to use my keypad and I'm going to type in 75 feet. I'm going to hit enter and it scaled it. So the key is put your origin point, your drag point, then drag it to where you want to go, either stretching it or decreasing its size. All right, let's double check this real quick before we move to the next step. So I'm going to select my drawing again, my inserted CAD file. I'm going to go ahead and measure it just to make sure I got 75 feet. And looks like we're in business there, 75 feet. So I can scroll in a little closer to really try to nail that endpoint, but I can see looking at that dimension here, that's pretty close to 75 feet. So I'm going to hit escape to clear out of that. And what we did here is we imported an external CAD file and we scaled it to fit our project. So in the next clip, I'm going to show you how we can uh, do some additional changes in this file here. I'm going to show you how we can uh, delete some layers and also get find out a little bit about the different layers that are inside this particular CAD file. So I'll meet you in the next clip.